So our topic of the week is the new Excel technology now on your iPad. And it sort of was on Windows phones because I actually had a Windows phone for a uh, small amount of time before I, I realized that they didn't work. No, seriously, this is true. The speaker on it didn't work. But anyway, I was using Excel on it. And it was actually not very easy to use. But um, Microsoft Office going to the iPad is definitely a new um, thing that is very necessary. So uh, today's topic is going to deal with not just the evolution of Excel, or I should say not just with the mobile technology that Excel is evolving into, but the, the way um, our technology has sort of changed Excel. So like on my version of Excel, I can use my finger um, to touch the screen and do things, and it really is not useful. In fact, I sometimes have to flip it off. I don't particularly like it. But just thinking about the future of Excel, um, where is Excel going? And mobile and uh, mobile uses of Excel, especially in terms of the web app. So, wh where is the future of that? And I will hand it off to Mr. Bill to get us going. Okay, so Jordan, you know that uh, version that you used on the Windows Phone uh, mm -hmm. that came out for the iPhone as well, um, and I paid ninety nine dollars for that, right? It's allegedly free, but I paid ninety nine dollars to get that, and I hated that version. It it had four colors, four colors, right? That's that's two bit color. Um, that was the worst thing ever. And when the stock, when the Microsoft stock started to run up in anticipation of um, the Excel for the iPad, I'm like, this is just going to be horrible. I'm going to hate this. It's going to be as bad as the one for the iPhone. Um, but then it came out, and they did just a really, 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 really good job with this thing. Um, the charts yeah. render. Um, it, it, it's a large list of things that works, including things that I think are incredibly goofy, like inserting a shape and rotating the shape and adding, uh, you know, uh, 3D to the shape. Which, like, why would that be one of the features that made it? But it it did make it, um, and you know, a lot of a lot of things are there that make it feel like Excel 2010, Excel 2013. Um, they just did a beautiful job with this. Um, I have one client that his entire Salesforce has iPads and you know he called me up the day it came out and he's like all right you know, let's let's figure out how to take these reports and just send them to the iPad send them to the iPad so they don't have to open their computers to get this this data so um, I kudos to Microsoft uh, and impressed. the Excel team I am I, I, I saw several colors more than two more than two now did you hear that Clippy is actually in that version get out no that's my April Fool's joke <laughs> No, that's, that's, gone. that's gone. <laughs> but, now, but now, so my question is about um, how uh, compatible it is. Because, um, say, like with Excel Web App, you can't bring shapes into the web app. And then, um, you know, the Excel for, for Mac, well, it doesn't have slicers. So, what about this iPad version? Is there anything missing? Yeah, there are a few things missing. Slicers are missing. Slicers for regular tables are missing. Slicers for pivot tables are, are missing because they're like, we came from the Mac, where this was designed by the Mac team. So the Mac doesn't support those. We don't support those. The one that absolutely killed me that I couldn't believe is not working, and I'm hoping that it's going to, you know, one Thursday it's going to, or Tuesday it's going to pop it in. Uh, hyperlinks within the workbook are not working. So you can hyperlink to a web page. But my plan, mm -hmm. my plan with my client was to have 30 different reports and to have a, you know, a next button, next, 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 and that won't work. I can't go to jump to the next sheet using a hyperlink, and that was just really, um, wow. that was bad. Although I guess you could just click on the tab, the sheet tab at the bottom. Right. Um, but still, that that was one. But you know, so much stuff does work. The data validation, the spark lines, uh, the icon sets, the shapes, pictures. Cool. Uh, yeah. It, now is that the, the future? I mean, is is using it on your iPad the future? You know. Uh, I just feel like I bought an extra monitor now, so I'm having more monitor space, and now everything's going smaller to portable. Kind of I, annoying. I think, well, you know, there's always going to be people who are authoring Excel spreadsheets, and they're always going to be using the, the client on the PC, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's a lot of people who are just consuming the stuff we create, and those people can be using the iPad. Well, or, and, you know, what, you know, but what kills it, though, is um, slicers. And... and um, Pivot charts, man, they make things so easy. Or, or you know, and the alternative is a whole bunch of sum ifs formulas. But now, then, you need a new layer of protection to protect all of that stuff. 
because uh, people don't have the, uh, the pivot charts. So yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so if they would ever get to the point where we had power pivot, so if Power BI comes around that we could consume uh, DAX-based power pivot driven power view things on the iPad, that would be that would solve a lot of that problem, mm -hmm. right? So let's hope well, for that. It'd be really nice if. Can you, oh, sorry. Can, can you say something about? Um, we mentioned it was developed by the Mac team. Where does the decision come from to say this one won't have retrieved data from web and it won't have slicers and it won't have pivot charts? Yeah, so here's my opinion on that. Back in the, after Excel 97, Microsoft forked Excel. So that code base uh, left and it went to China. And for a long time, you know, it was two different products made in two entirely different places. And they would do something on the Windows side and they would try and maybe mirror 90% of it on the Mac. And that's why the VBA code on the Mac would never work. You'd always have to go back and make your code kind of Excel 97 compliant to have the Mac VBA wow. code work. But okay. the good news, the good news is some number of years ago, three, four, five years ago, they, they brought that back. They brought those people back. And the people running at Mac Excel now, the, the Apple experience team, those are all long-time Excel people, like long-time Excel people. I walked in that room uh, at the, the last summit, and I looked around, and these are people that I've seen on the Excel team for 10 or 15 years. And, and I trust, I trust that they're going to get parity. They're, they're going to bring that Mac version back in line with what we have on uh, the PC. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's a good thing. Unfortunately, it's just going to take a couple of versions before we ever get there, but they're going to bring those back together. So, so it's not a. It doesn't sound like it's some conscious decision to not have retrieved data from web or slicers. Well, I'm, I'm sure it was a conscious decision by people that, with all due respect to the group in China that was doing this for ten years, they're not hard. They're not long time Excel people, right? They're they're taking a product on Windows and they're trying to mirror it on the Mac. And so you know they they have their own issues. Of, okay. And again, this is all just my opinion. I, I don't know this for sure. I just look at the picture and, you know, I'll ask questions and the answer I get makes me say, you know, you're not, you're not slinging data, data 40 hours a week. If you were slinging data 40 hours a week, this would be more important to you. Um, mm -hmm. and, gotcha. and now the people that are on the Apple experience team at Microsoft um, are people that have been slinging data and, and they understand. And I, I trust that things are going to get back to parity. Cool. Cool. All right. All right. You know, which is a good thing. There's not. There's still far more people using Windows, but there's a lot of people now that have Macs at home. So you know, they they use Windows at work, and then they they go home to their Mac. Um, yep. And you know that version of Excel needs to be relatively similar. It does, because because I liked my Mac that I had for three years, but last August it just had to go. Because, you know, when somebody wants a simple dashboard and I'm saying, okay, yeah, we can use these slicers, but I can't show it to you on my Mac. It's back yeah. home on my PC. And then the Mac, the Mac had to go. I'm a little jealous of the Mac, though. They, they have an icon for, um, for uh, to insert the dollar signs in a formula. And we don't have that icon in Windows. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm a tiny bit jealous yeah. uh, for that one, one feature. I, uh, yeah, that, I'd be jealous of that if I knew it was there. Yeah. That's a good Not that I know a lot about the Mac, but I saw a Mac once and I was like, oh, that's a, that's an icon we don't have. We could use that. Yeah. They should steal that back. So how do you think that developing for mobile is going to change the way we consume uh, dashboards and our other Excel products? Um, because it, it does seem to constrain how much spreadsheet you can use. Um, not that this is really such a big big issue, but I do wonder because it's not really easy to jump between tabs. So do you think it's actually, there's going to be a different trajectory in the products that we make going forward or this, there won't be any difference? Well, you know, I'm concerned that there's not going to be VBA, right? And if there's no VBA, then having a name like Option Explicit VBA is really going to be really painful. <laughs> it's a liability. It's a liability. It's going to be on sale. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna have doorstops R Us, and I'll just sell my book. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh, Don Rickles on uh, a special guest. <laughs> He's selling his book again. <laughs> no, but this, but I'm selling its multi uses. Uh, no, yeah, hey, it's well, true. No, I, I mean, I, I stay awake at night worrying about your domain name, Jordan, but I mean, the real thing is if BBA goes away, we're all in trouble because no, that's, I that's our. Mean. I can I can live off my good looks. I mean, I can do something. I don't really know about the other MVPs though. Uh, but, upside down Chien Du. Once that beer grows in, right. baby, <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the problem is so Power Pivot's huge now, and I don't really. I mean, I'm not an expert in it. I feel like I'm I'm pretty. I can get. I can say I'm an expert in several other things, but that's really something I need to get up to speed with because VBA is going away, and well, I shouldn't say it's going away. There's always no, going to be four. People are going to use it, but this is changing. This this field is changing, and I feel like there's going to be this very strong bimodal split between the technology that um, I'm using and what the newer MVPs. Assuming, let's say, 10 years from now, I'm an MVP. Um, you know, I'll be hitchhiking to the conference, and you'll have to pay my uh, for my dinners and stuff, and I'll be begging. But assuming that I'm there, that there'll be the newer people are going to be into the more um, web app stuff and jQuery. Uh, and Power Pivot, and Power BI, when it, when that is finally sort of morphed into Excel and doesn't exist as this outer thing that it currently exists as. So my future's bleak. Well, okay, so I don't I don't follow that that question that you just your statement, but I want to go back. <laughs> Bill is talking about um, BDA going away. That there is conversation about that. Is well, it a, a part about it going away? No, it's just okay, so, so VBA, VBA will be there for the rest of our lives, hands down, okay? But the problem is they're not going to be adding things to it. It's not going to be fully supported um, and all kinds of other uh, things like that. And, you know, these new things coming along, like the agaves, the, the web apps for Excel 2013, you know, it's not, it's not VBA. And... Um, we'll always be able to use VBA and like even on the iPad. So you, the iPad can't run VBA, but I'm going to sell a lot of VBA code that's going to generate reports that will be consumed on the iPad. All right. So that's fine. Um, I still get to use my knowledge base, but, um, you know, uh, there'll be a lot of platforms out there that don't run VBA and that that's worrisome, I guess. Okay. So it, it's so dated. I mean, it's just the issue is that um, if you are a developer and you're coming into this, I mean, why would you choose to use this old Visual Basic um, 6.3? You know, now we have .NET. This stuff, I mean, the technology that uh, VBA uses, uh, the COM component object model, I think that's right. That sounds right. I mean, they don't support it anymore. You have to write a .NET wrapper to, to deal with it, and there's, there's add-ins and things you can do. But the new stuff is jQuery um, and web, and web uh, development. And, of course, that is going to probably meet a time when there's something newer that replaces that. But... There's definitely going to be people who are going to be more interested in that and who are going to become very good at that. So VBA will always be around. The question is, um, will people be? Will people want to learn it? Um, and it's not necessarily a requirement anymore, I would say, to become very good at Excel, or at least in the future it's going to become less of a requirement. But it's still, it's still a great language that I like, especially when you use option explicit. That makes it bloom. <laughs> you should know, Bill. But the next Agave doesn't like. Well, maybe it does let you make variables on the fly. I can't remember. I have to look that up. I don't want to say. I don't want to say that and be wrong. But the other languages don't. Um, they do require variable declaration. So sure, absolutely. That's why I love VBA. It's the one language that doesn't require variable declaration. Well, it's something to think about because I talk to my developer friends and they're like, hmm, VBA. Who uses VBA? I use C sharp and C plus plus, where variables are declared, and I can make things that are pointers. Well, you, I guess you, you, you were too. declaring the variables again. But no, <laughs> I'm just saying, this is something that people think about because this is something, this is a feature of modern language. And, but the, I mean, but you go back to, to who's using this stuff, who's doing it. The, the people I taught last week, they're in a small marketing department. Are they going to use whatever it's going to take to start getting JavaScript to work? They're going to need to know a whole lot more than Excel and there's going to be a learning curve as opposed to me going in for five hours to show them about loops and uh, if then else and they're off and running. So the thing that I, I've noticed, so okay, so a lot of people who do VBA don't think they can do C Sharp or jQuery and JavaScript, but actually they, I mean it's not, 
I personally think, but maybe it's because I have a computer science background um, to some extent, that I don't That's think it's that much. Well, I'm saying that I don't think it's um, I don't think it's above the purview. So at this point, it's not above their learning ability to learn these things. So at this point, VBA wins by default, and we've sort of convinced ourselves that it's so easy to use and it's very flexible. But so are these other languages. There's no reason we've just give VBA we've privileged it um, to win by default. But there's no other reasons to think that these other languages won't come to replace it, especially because the other languages evolve. And VBA is not evolving. So they could have all become easier. And, and I think really, it's a really good discussion. Think about for what and for whom? What are they trying to do? And this lady says she had a, a um, range of sales, maybe uh, 200 rows and 20 columns, and she wanted to multiply all of the numbers by 1.1. 1. 1. Okay. A few lines of VBA code and she's done. All right, so now what is that conversation like if we want to talk about C Sharp or JavaScript? From, from few, where they were at the point. No, it's a few lines. It's a few lines, Oz. The problem is to write the few lines of VBA, it's Alt F11, right? I have 750 million people, 750 million people that have Excel on their desktop. I can walk up to any one of them and press Alt F11 and bam, I have a programming language. C Sharp. I don't. What, I don't know, Jordan. I have no idea. What do I need? Do I need to go by Visual Studio? What, no, what do well, I, need? I, I was C just Sharp? saying. I was just saying C Sharp as a as an example because the jQuery. Multi- I, I I don't even have a clue how to start. I can press Alt F11. I'll show you. I'll show you. J, jQuery is awesome. So uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. <laughs> but this might be a great segue to the hot tips. Uh, but, but first off, for the people who are watching this at home, um, Oz did say three person company. Uh, so you, you can take a shot. Every time I says three-person company, <laughs> take a shot. Wait, that's uh, not so far. Uh, or or a small marketing small marketing group or a, or a dental shop or something like I that. Think, so go ahead and take your shot. 